S460, 60 volts output, 6.6 .6 amps, to go with the latest version of the, um, the RD6006 power supply. I built one from the earlier version of the power supply. That's this one here. So this is, uh, I think I got a 15, um, 15 volt power supply in there so it can comfortably go up to about 14, 13 and a half uh, volts. Um, it's probably, I think it's a three amp power supply. But the new model seems to be much more capable, comes with a larger display and what looks like to be a better user interface. Plus it has built in, the binding posts are in there. You can also um, connect it up to USB in order to, or you can use um, a, a program on your computer to do some control and monitoring of the power supply. So let's take a look and see what this looks like. The, uh, visit the website. Blah, blah, blah. It's actually not badly packaged. And there we go. Okay. Ah. An ESP12F for Wi-Fi communications. That's nice. Um, uh, is that a fuse? And some uh, crimps for connecting up to power. And, oh, that looks like a temperature probe. Huh. And then we've got the unit itself, which uh, is right there. So, feels nice. These buttons feel all right. I mean, they are what they are. And what do we have here? So there is, looks like a battery backup. We've got a TXRX 5 volt. So that looks like a programming module. That's how we get power into the uh, little guy. Oh yeah, it is a fuse. So there's there's our fuse, and it's um, ceramic encased, so if it pops, it doesn't pop glass all over the place. And there's another fuse up there, so we've got a pair of fuses. Oh wait, no, that wouldn't be for, that would be for the optional um, Wi-Fi module. Duh. Okay, there we go. TXRX. So yeah, this is used, being used as a serial modem. Yeah, well, so this is a buck converter, basically, and then it's got a current limiting in it current adjust programmable power. So why don't we try and connect this thing up and see what it's capable of. Okay, so that's a look inside of the, um, of the power supply. It looks like they've taken some amount of care to um, um, route out uh, between the high voltage and the low voltage side of the power supply. Um, I can't say that that's a name brand cap by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but it does look like we've got um, yeah, X2 um, capacitors for the high side, uh, the filtering of the line. Um, and probably X caps el elsewhere. Some Celastic schmoot on there, there could be more that would have um, been nice for the capacitors, but at least there is some nod towards wanting to make this um, vibration resistant. Could be much better. Um, this coil here is not mounted on a base that is then epoxied down. It is simply um, on these wires and it's not even um, epoxied down or it's not even celastic down on the other side. It's just sort of flopping here. So I think eventually this is going to fail from vibration, um, of turning things on, uh, just the vibration of the unit. We do have a temperature sensor here, it looks like, and I believe that that would be to turn the fan on and off because it is, did say it's a temperature um, uh, sensitive fan. Um, but uh, you can see kind of like uh, there's a residue on the board, crap all over it. 
from the manufacturing process that wasn't cleaned up. This power supply, they said that they tested and uh, they recommend it. If you've got the money for a mean well, I would spend the money on a mean well built together, but it looks like at least it's, it's designed electrically, so it's not um, a big fire hazard. Yeah, five, five screws holding things down. We've got um, a fairly beefy thickness of case here. Uh, 1.7 mil aluminum case. These edges aren't rough, so there's been some treatment, or at least they've been, you uh, know, the, uh, the punch out is to the inside, so, so the rough edge is onto the inside. But it does provide some nice mounting holes that are pre tapped. So, yeah, you know, all in all, given the, uh, the price of this thing, which was, I forget, I think around 40 bucks, that uh, seems pretty reasonable. I'm sure that you'll find out in the comments whether or not the uh, I'm setting myself up for a disaster in my home because it's going to burn down. I wonder if Clive has opened one of these up. It'd be interesting to get his opinion on it. Sixty point oh one four. I wonder how much ripple is on that thing. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got going here, coming out of the major, the main power supply. We've got what looks to be about twenty millivolts peak to peak of ripple uh, coming out of that sixty volts. Okay, let's see what happens when we hook it up to the um, our output. It's a nice power connector, actually. Um, I'd like to see some strain relief there, but... Okay. In minus, in plus, minus, plus. All right. <clears throat> so far, so good. Okay, no pokey. No pokey around the back, okay? Boots up fast. It's got an input voltage. Oh, input voltage of 59.97. So it's reading. What did I say? Uh, so it's reading 0.04 volts low compared to my. You know, unless it's drawing down the power supply already, even though it's got no load on it. I doubt that, but you can always check. 59.925. So it's uh, 59.93. So it's 0.03 volts low, which is, I think, in spec. Well, it doesn't seem to be shutting anything off, but it just reports the temperature. But maybe that's just not high enough for it to um, care. I would think that a 90 degrees Celsius would be hot enough for it to care, but maybe it'll turn it off if there's a load on. So we can we can test that. Okay, the power supply says that it's delivering five volts with about well, then that's my maximum current right now. It's delivering 0.263 amps according to it. According to the electronic load, it is delivering 4.99. Um, so that's uh, third digit accuracy. And let's just make sure. Yeah, 4.9902, 4.9901 on the um, 30, on my bench meter. So yeah, that's pretty pretty close, I would say. And then what sort of ripple? do we have at 20 millivolts per division let's so there's a few spikes coming up there but all well less than um, five millivolts that's not too bad I think that's in spec so initial reaction is that I need to turn off all of these fans in order to make myself heard 
So it seems to be providing a reasonable amount of um, stable output voltage at 5 volts. Let's see what happens when we um, try and turn it up, though. So current sound. Uh, kick in the load. My load was set for 2.6 amps. Still drawing that. Let's increase it a bit so that we're drawing something closer to, let's say, maybe 100 watts. Drawing 2 amps. That's roughly 100 watts. Yeah, it seems to be delivering it. Now, what sort of noise do we get? It's about the same in terms, uh, it's just a little bit higher, I think, in terms of ripple at that stage. That's still 20 millivolts per division, 48 volts, 2.2 amps. It says it's drawing 2.05 amps. It's not too shabby. Yeah, is anything getting warm though? That eh, power supply is getting a little warm. The fan on the back of this hasn't even kicked in yet even though it's plugged in. That's looking good. So let's let's see if we can draw 200, uh, burn 200 watts. Okay, now this is getting into the dangerous range, so I should really be careful about what I poke around at. Three amps at 48 volts? Yeah, worth being careful. Ripple hasn't gone up very much at all. I should put this into peak hold, shouldn't I? What am I, what am I thinking? 1.96 millivolt peak to or RMS is the ripple on there. Yeah, it seems to be delivering that. Nothing's getting too hot. I'm holding the uh, thermometer or the um, thermocouple to raise the temperature. I wonder if we should try and heat it up and, and shut it down that way. Although, something tells me that it's just going to be fine. Now, the power supply is starting to get warm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's starting to get warm. So I will have to... But the, the fan hasn't kicked in yet, so it hasn't gotten that warm. All right. Well, let's see if we can crank up our, um, our current some more. 244 watts. Seems to be delivering it. So that's with five and a half amps of current draw at 48 volts. Ah, and there we've reached our limit because now we're clipping when we can't get higher than 58.4. So that's the, um, the drop of the buck converter. So let's bring our current down a bit. Yeah. I wonder how much higher the um, the PS this guy can go. <clears throat> There's a little trimmer on the uh, power PSU, so I increased that, and that is as much as we can draw. Oh wait, no, it's not. I don't know what that smell was, but it doesn't seem to be uh, getting any worse. So. Onward and upward. Okay, yeah, delivering 60.000 volts. That's what it's set at. It's reporting 59.98, so that seems good. Um, <clears throat> is it super noisy? Let's just check that. Now we're still in around the, oh, less. Yeah, roughly about, I'd say, 5 millivolts. And that's at 179 watts, so let's see if we can draw a bit more current here. Now yeah, this power supply is getting warm, but the fan still hasn't kicked on. Oh, wait, did I plug that back in? Probably not. That's probably why the fan hasn't kicked on. I thought I plugged it in. I'll have to check that. But um, yeah, so this looks like it's, um, it's delivering 
the current that it says it will and the delivering the power it says it will and it's looking like it um, is uh, not doing so in a uh, noisy fashion not too noisy anyways if you're happy with um, with what that looks like now let's take a look at the the noise more more closely okay because there are these peaks that are a little worrisome. So that's what the noise is looking like at full draw. Yeah, it's getting close to closer to ten with some 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 peaks for sure. See if we can get a better look at those peaks. So those peaks are definitely getting up into the 20, um, 20 millivolt range, peak to peak. Um, if you look closely. At them. But still, that's at full bore, so that's not too bad. Okay, so a little more about the build quality. I'm not like super thrilled about the quality of these things. I mean, they're not bad. Don't get me wrong, they're not the cheapest things in the world. They're, you've got the ability to get, you know, a stack up of connectors under there. So that's not too bad. Um, and they have a reasonable feel to them. They don't feel like they're gonna break on you if you try and tighten them down. So that feels pretty solid once it's mount mounted into a case. I wonder if you can enter, yep. Enter. Yeah, pretty reasonable. Okay, so shift menu gets you into here. Shift M7, probably some sort of memory location so you can store different configurations, I'm guessing. You can lock it so that this doesn't change anything, probably. Um, unlock it and this moves you up and down the interface oh yeah so this is how you set your memories your product number version 125 of the firmwares and what do we have here Two different displays. It looks like is that a touch? Is this a touch screen? No. Ah, there we go. You can let's see what that looks like. Oh, it's got a graph. Oh, it gives you a history of the power. Oh, that's kind of nice. Histogram. I think these are about fifty dollars US on um, AliExpress. If you've got a, a power supply already. Um, you will be able to just, you know, plug it into a power supply. This, I think, was around 40-ish odd dollars. Um, and then I've got cases that I can put this in and I'll have fun putting it into a case. Or you can buy a, a complete kit with, which includes a, a power connector, all of the cabling, um, a fan, and a case with switches for um, turning on and off the uh, the power supply, but I don't think it comes with a power supply for 107. So, is it a uh, is it a good deal? I don't know. I just unboxed it and taken a look at it. It seems reasonable. I've been happy with the other one that I've that, that I've had the um, this little guy here. This little guy here, yeah, it can um, takes up to 40 volt inputs with up to 32 volt outputs. Uh, three amp output current, total um, continuous power output of 96 watts. 
Um, I might build this into a case with uh, with my other um, 3003, so I have a, a three uh, three supply power supply, but um, and then have a couple set up for different voltages, so you can have different power rails. But uh, yeah, that seems like a reasonable price for a power supply. Um, that has these features. And I haven't even explored what you can do with the USB. So I'm, I'm imagine, and, and Wi-Fi. I imagine you can um, uh, collect data from the, the graphing uh, user interface I still haven't quite gotten used to. But this is an OK, and this is an Enter, and I'm not sure what the difference between the two are. Um, anyways. So yeah, I would imagine that you can collect stats over over a period of time what the current draw was. You can, you know, set your projects up and measure the current that they're that they're drawing at various different times. Uh, so yeah, I think that'll that's a handy uh, handy little feature. I don't remember this having anything like that. So in any event, um, I would say if you're in the market for a power supply, I think you could do worse than this. If you've got a way of powering this power supply, now I mean you don't have to feed it 60 volts either. Um, you could just hook up a 19 volt um, old laptop power supply or 12 volts, and you would have all of the features, but just with a different maximum input voltage. So, yeah, I think it's a reasonable purchase. As always, thanks for watching, and catch you later. Bye for now.